Previously on Black Bear Forge. I let this cool in vermiculite overnight and now I can pick it up and take a little closer look at it. It's a little bit crooked here, but I think we can still straighten that. Might have to put it in the vise and bend it a little bit. And it's got just a few little wrinkles I want to take out, and then I want to clean up this pan a little bit. It's still a little bit too sharp a bend down there. I want to even that out, maybe, maybe give it a little bit of a dish here. We'll just see what we need to do with it, but I'm going to do some of this cold. And then as it starts to work hard, and I'll probably heat it up and go back to doing some of it hot, especially trying to straighten this out of line stuff here. I think this really needs to be done hot. And I dug around in my pile of drifts and I found a drift that actually fits that much better. So if we put that in there before we put that in the vise, that'll make it much less likely to kink when we try to straighten that. So I think we can work with that. Starting just taking out a couple little wrinkles right there at the back. Getting compound shapes in sheet metal can be kind of difficult. It's not something I do much of. This is about the extent of what I do with sheet metal. Good sheet metal workers are extremely skilled and know a whole lot more about this kind of thing than I do. That's not bad. I think I'm going to go ahead and heat that up and see if I can straighten that bend. And then we'll do just a little more if we need to. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this. Looks like there's just a little bit of a kink in there still. Just a matter of dealing with all the fiddly stuff. You might have to spend five minutes doing this. You might have to spend an hour doing this. It's hard to say. It just depends on how good a job you did in the first place. Trying not to get it extremely hot because I don't want to mess it up. The hotter it is, the floppier it'll be. I think that's better. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And let's do one last little shaping and smoothing over the wood block here. It's got a depression in there so that gives us something to kind of work down into here. Although it's a little bit too much of an upturn there. There we go. I believe that is really all I want there. Next thing I want to do is bring this up to heat and just let it air cool and normalize. I think it's a pretty important step in this thin material like this. So I'm just going to set it there on the coal forge and let it cool. I'm going to run this through a couple of normalizing cycles. Then we'll harden and temper the blade part. I'm not going to worry about hardening and tempering the socket. I want it to stay as soft as I can so that I can drill a hole in it and put a pin through the handle. We've been through our normalizing cycles and I've done just a little bit more grinding on this to even out some irregularities. And we're now ready to heat treat. 
The saw blades are something in the neighborhood of L6, although somebody, had, the last time I used some of this, said they were 15 and 20. Similar stuff, apparently similar heat treat properties. I'm just gonna do this in the gas forward, so we wanna bring it up to just a red heat. We don't want it orange or bright yellow, anything that hot that's way too high for this. And then we're gonna quench it in oil, and I've preheated my oil. So it's just a matter of warming up the gas forge and then bringing this up to temperature. I'm gonna turn the burner off and let it soak a little bit, get a good even heat on this. Now for my purposes, this little trowel will probably never be used in hard soil. This is for digging in prepared garden beds, already mixed with compost or something else that makes it easy to dig. So this probably doesn't even need to be hardened. But since the saw blade material is hardenable, I figure we might as well. That's just the color I want. Go into the oil, move it up and down and side to side, but don't move it front to back that will create some resistance on that shovel blade. If you're moving it this way, it's pushing oil and creating an air gap or an insulation layer that might keep it from hardening properly and might certainly create warpage. And I'm not quenching the socket. I want it to stay soft because I'm gonna drill a hole in that eventually. Or I hope to drill a hole in it. Now that socket's cooled well below a black heat, I'll go ahead and quench it just to make sure it isn't drawing temper down into the rest of this. Then we're going to go into the toaster oven. This is going to stink one way or the other, but I still wipe most of the oil off of it so it doesn't smell so bad. One reason to have a little toaster oven in the shop instead of doing it in your kitchen. And I'll leave it in the toaster oven for about an hour. There are other ways you could temper this. You could get a block of steel hot, polish this up a little bit so you can watch temper colors run and try to get it even. Trying to get it even throughout this entire piece is pretty tough to do that way. I think doing it at a temperature controlled oven is really a lot easier. I could use the Paragon heat treating oven, which is extremely precise and accurate, but this really doesn't need that much precision. The toaster oven is quick, it's easy. It's one we had in the house where we upgraded to something bigger, so I figured I might as well use it in the blacksmith shop. Plus, you can heat a breakfast burrito up in it. I think that came out pretty darn good. You think it needs a handle? Probably a darn good idea. So we put a center punch mark in here. And by holding this in a V block, it's just a couple of pieces of angle iron. It uh, really helps keep it from rolling and gives you a better lined up pin here. Now that does tend to deform the socket just a little bit, setting a handle that way. Not really gonna hurt too much, but if that concerns you, you might use a roll pin or just put a pin in and epoxy it, and that would probably hold just fine. But in any case, that handle's not coming off until the handle itself rots. Now somebody out there is saying, well, how did you make the handle? Fair enough, let's roll that beautiful handle footage.
So that's just a quick look at how I turned the handle for this. There was a little bit more trimming and sanding to get it to fit. In fact, I'll sand it again and put a little bit more oil on it again just to get the grubby blacksmith marks off of it. But then this is ready to put to work. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Ring the bell next to the subscribe button to be notified when I make new videos. Feel free to stick around and watch a few of the other videos. Share the videos with your friends. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and I'll see you for the next one. Mm -hmm.